Welcome to episode four of this Comfy UI series. Today, I want to show you the image to image workflow and how you can download and use LoRa models in Comfy UI. This is a basic SDXL text to image workflow. I called it SDXL because it uses an SDXL based stable diffusion model. You should be familiar with this workflow by now. If not, go back to the previous episodes. We talked about how it still needs an image, in this case, a latent image in order to generate something. But what if I don't want the starting point to be an empty image? What if I want the image I choose to be the starting point? Well, we can do that. I'll delete this node. We want to load our own image. So we search for load and find a node called load image. It provides a basic drawing image, but we can choose our own image to upload. I'll select the bunny in the forest image. When we try to connect it, we see that there's an image output point, but the K sampler requires a latent input. So what do we do in this case? We're working in pixel mode and we need to convert it to a format that Stable Diffusion understands, which is the latent mode. To do this, we can use the VAE encode node and now we have a latent that we can connect to the K sampler. Don't forget to connect the VAE. For my model, the VAE is included. So I'll connect it to where it says VAE. Now, when I cue the prompt, I see that the bunny didn't affect the image. Why is that? It's because of the denoise value, which is set to one. We talked about the K sampler in the last episode, but I didn't cover denoise yet, and now is the perfect time to explain it. The denoising strength determines how much the output image differs from the input image. Low denoising strength, like 0.1, adds a small amount of noise to the input image, meaning the output image will be very similar to the input with only slight modifications. High denoising strength, like value of 1, adds a significant amount of noise, transforming the input image into a nearly unrecognizable state of noise. This allows for a completely new image to be generated based on the prompt with minimal influence from the original input. The process behind how Stable Diffusion works is complex, but here's a simplified version to help you understand. In the first case, with low denoise strength, it was easier to guess what's in the image because you can still see the original content. In the second case, with high denoise strength, it's harder to guess what's in the image because the noise has obscured the original content. As a result, the output could be anything like a robot, a bunny, or a house, making it look like a completely new image. Think of it as adjusting the opacity of tracing paper overlay. A low denoying strength is like the tracing paper is very transparent, so the original drawing underneath is clearly visible and the changes are minor. If is high denoising strength, then the tracing paper is almost opaque, allowing you to draw a completely new image with little reference to the original. The term denoise is used instead of add noise because the process starts by adding noise to the image, but the main focus is on removing that noise to produce a clear high quality output. Back to our example, I usually start with a value like 0.6 so that it is a little different from the original and the prompt has enough power to make changes to the image then I play around with lower or higher values this is the result for 0.5 if I lower the value even more to 0.4 it is different but not much and the prompt with robot doesn't have much impact if I set a value too high like 0.9 the result is completely different in this case if I want a robot bunny, I use a value like 0.65 and make sure to include robot bunny in the prompt. As you can see, the bunny is in the same position and composition, but now it's a robot and set in the environment I chose. Right now, the image is generated with the width and height of the loaded image. However, we know that depending on the, the model, it prefers to work with certain sizes. My loaded image was 1024 pixels because I work with an SDXL model. So something around that value produces good results. But what happens if I load a larger image instead? Let's try it. I'll choose a different image that I've upscaled four times. Now, when I cue the prompt, it looks like it's going to take forever to generate. If I open the command window and check what's happening, you can see it says it ran out 
of memory and is retrying with a tiled VAE. So clearly that image is way too big. So I'll go to view queue to see the running jobs and then click cancel job. But if you're wondering what would have happened if I let it run, well, I would have ended up with an image that looks like this. Instead of taking four seconds, it took 200 seconds. It's the same size as the loaded image, but clearly not what I wanted. So the solution is to make the image smaller before uploading it using software like Photoshop, or we can do it uh, right here. If I create a little space between nodes and search for image, I can find a node called upscale image. When I select that, we can see width and height options, just like we had in the text to image workflow with latent images. Now we can control the exact size. My image is square, so I'll choose values close to that. But if you have a landscape or portrait image, just make sure the sizes are close to 1024 pixels and preferably the values are divisible by 64 because computers work better with those numbers. I'm deleting the link between the loaded image and the VAE encode node to make room for the upscale image node. Then I'll connect them by matching the image output with the image input. Even if you're not sure how it works, it's fairly intuitive to connect inputs and outputs with the same color and name. Now, when I cue the prompt again, you can see it's quite fast. If I look in the command window, I see it took only five seconds instead of 200. The resulting image size matches the dimensions you set in this box. You can also enable cropping if you want the result to have a different ratio than the uploaded image. But what if I want this generated image to be the loaded image without saving it and loading it again? You can do that by right-clicking on the image and choosing Copy Image, then go to the Load Image node, right-click, and although I expected a Paste Image option, it seems to be missing. However, you can still paste it using the Control plus V shortcut. I'll do that now. When I cue the prompt, I get another image of the robot based on this new input. Even if I delete the Load Image node, you can still use any image copied to the clipboard whether it's from Photoshop, a screenshot, or elsewhere. When you use Control plus V, it will create a load image node with the pasted image. This way, you can easily connect that node and run it to get your generations faster without having to repeatedly save and upload uh, images. Let's move on to Laura now. I'm loading the basic SDXL text to image workflow again. You can quickly see that this one loads an empty latent image, but first let's talk a bit about what a Laura is. Laura stands for low rank adaptation. It is a method used to fine tune large pre-trained neural network models efficiently. Laura fine tunes large models by updating only a small targeted part of the model. This makes it quicker and less resource intensive to adapt the model to specific tasks or new data sets. With LoRa, you can fine tune a model to generate specific objects like cars or gadgets that it may not have been able to generate before. This helps the model understand and create images of things it previously didn't know how to render. You can also adapt a model to generate images that accurately depict a specific person capturing their unique features and style. You can also train a model to create images in a particular art style, such as Impressionism, Surrealism, or a specific artist's style. Imagine you have a toolbox with many tools. If you need to do a specific job, like tightening a unique type of screw, you could add a special attachment to one of your screwdrivers. This attachment, LoRa, lets you do the job without needing a whole new toolbox. Similarly, LoRa tweaks a small part of a big model to make it better at a specific task, such as creating images of a particular object, depicting a specific person, or emulating an art style. I know this might sound a bit basic and boring, but it will make more sense once we test a LoRa. LoRa is a model you can download, similar to the Stable Diffusion model. However, it's smaller and faster to create. There are various tutorials online on how to train a LoRa, but in this video, I'll show you how to download one and use it. If we go to the Civit AI website and click on the Models tab, we can see all kinds of models. 
by going to the filters, we can choose LoRa as the model type. And you'll also need to know which base model you're using. The most popular ones are V1.5, but in my case, I have an SD Excel model, so I'll select that. For the time period, I'll choose year to get more models. You can then click on a model to see what types of images it can generate. For this video, I'll show you two examples. Search for the EtherCloud model. You'll see that it lists the base model as SDXL, which is what I want. Also, make sure to note the trigger words listed. You need to use these exact words in the prompt. You can read more information here about what weight to use and other details. Then click the download button to download um, the model. After that, place it in the Comfy UI folder, navigate to the models folder, and then to the Loras folder where you should save the downloaded model. While it's downloading, let's search for another one called Ether Fire. Check to make sure it uses the same base model, SDXL. You'll see that it has different trigger words that you need to use in the prompt. Then look for more information to see if there's anything else you should know. After that, download it and place it in the same Loris folder. Once you have downloaded the models, it should look like this. You'll see it even has a file that says put Loras here. Now, go to Comfy UI. If it was open when you downloaded the files, just click the refresh button. Then we can see how to add the models to the workflow. Um, we need a Laura, so let's search for the word Laura to see what we can find. Uh, the load Laura option looks like something we need. Um, you'll see that from the drop down menu, you can select the downloaded models. Uh, I'll select the cloud model first. But where do we place this node? Let's think uh, logically. We have inputs and outputs labeled model, so we need to position it somewhere between the load checkpoint and the case sampler, as only those currently have the right connection points. We have clips on the input and output. One clip will definitely go to the load checkpoint, but where does the output clip go? Since the case sampler doesn't have a clip, only positive and negative, logically the node should be placed between the load checkpoint and the prompts. So let's do that. Connect the clip from the load checkpoint to the LoRa and then connect the clip from the LoRa to the prompts. Next we want the model link to go through the LoRa. So I'll delete the existing link and recreate it. Connect from the load checkpoint to the LoRa and then from the LoRa to the K sampler. It's like making a little detour to pass through the LoRa node. Why is the LoRa placed between the checkpoint and the prompt? By placing the LoRa node before the prompt encoding, the model is first adapted with the LoRa adjustments. This ensures that these adjustments are considered when interpreting the prompts. In other words, the modified model is used to understand and generate images based on the given prompts. So let's add a prompt, making sure to use the trigger words specified on the model page. The trigger words are cloud that look like, and I'll add a bullhead blue sky photo after them. I will also set the C to be fixed so we can compare the results later. I'll change randomized to fixed. Then I'll bypass the LoRa node to see what we get without using the LoRa for that prompt. When I run it, you'll see that I get a cloud, but it doesn't look like a bull as I want. So let's enable the LoRa node now by using the bypass option to activate it. Now, when I cue the prompt, we get something closer to what we had in mind. As you've likely noticed, this LoRa is specialized in making clouds resemble different subjects. You also have an option called Strength Model, which determines how strongly the LoRa adjustments are applied to the main model. It adjusts the impact of the fine tuning with a higher value making the adjustments more influential and a lower value making them less noticeable. I usually set it between 0.3 and 1. If you use a value that's too high, like 2 for example, it can make the image look worse. So try to use a value closer to the recommended settings, which is often around 1. Uh, play around with different prompts. Just remember to include those trigger words. Look a cloud that looks like a bunny. 
Let's try the second Laura, the one with the fire. Use the trigger words, fire that looks like. And when you run it, you'll get a fire that looks like a bull. Let's change the seed back to random and try a few generations to see what we can get. You might be wondering if this will work with an image you have. Like if you want to get a version of your bunny in fire. Yes, you can do that too. Let's convert this workflow into an image to image one. Delete the empty latent image node and add a load image node. Then use an encode VAE node to encode the image. And remember to connect the VAE. To ensure the image isn't too large and works well with stable diffusion, use the image upscale node placed between the load image and VAE encode nodes. For the prompt, I usually add the trigger words first so I don't forget them. Then I include the rest of the details like a bunny in the forest. It's important to remember to reduce the denoise value so um, the result looks more similar to your image. You can play with different values until you get something you like. In my case, a value of 0.5 made the bunny look like it was ignited in fire. To recap, the process begins by loading a pre-trained model, Juggernaut X, which is an SDXL model in this case. Next, a LoRa model called Ether Clouds is loaded, which fine-tunes the base model to make it better at creating clouds that resemble different subjects. Then the positive and negative text prompts are encoded so Stable Diffusion can understand them. An image of a bunny is loaded and scaled to a size that works well with our model. After scaling, the image is encoded. Together with the information from the model, LoRa, and prompts, it goes to the sampler, which performs the image generation. Finally, the image is decoded and saved to our computer. I've tried to explain everything as clearly as possible with my understanding uh, in a simplified way. Even if it's not the most accurate, I hope it helps make the concepts easier to understand. And that's all for today's episode. If you found something useful, please leave a like or a comment. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.